Yes, good afternoon here from Germany, or good morning wherever you are watching our webinar right now. My name is uh, Steffen Brauers. I'm working here for Krone Messtechnik in Germany, Duisburg, uh, in the marketing department, and I will um, introduce Michael Rumpf to, uh, to our interest. topic today. Um, we are glad to welcome you to our today's webinar, which we are conducting together with our business review partner. And uh, the topic will be the planning tool for water and wastewater industries, which is an uh, important topic for all kind of, um, yeah, for, uh, to, to, to make it easier actually to, uh, to plan your to, to plant inside the water and wastewater industry. So a couple of um, organizational point from my side. Um, the webinar is browser-based, so if you disconnect, click the link you received via email to rejoin the session. All of the icons along the bottom of your screen, screen are the interactive widgets that, have, that we have and offer today, so please interact with them all throughout the sessions. Then at the end, we have, of course, a question and answer session. And uh, you are really welcome to, um, to place your question inside the Q&A widget, and we will try at the end to answer as much question as possible, and all remaining questions will be answered um, afterwards, of course. And in case that you need any assistance, please click the Help widget. Um, yeah, if you experience any technical difficulties, some form for business review will um, kindly assist you to resolve the problem. So now I would um, hand over to Michael. Uh, Michael is our industry manager for uh, the water and wastewater industry uh, worldwide, and uh, yeah, we are happy to, uh, uh, to to bring this topic closer to you now. So Michael, it's your turn, please. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome you also from my, ta from my side here. And uh, it's a pleasure for me to have you all online this day for this webinar presentation of the planning tool for water and wastewater. So actually, this webinar is a pure live show, but nevertheless, we were faced with some technical problems, which leads us to record the direct live demo of the planning tool before. So this will be implemented into this show accordingly later. Well, Two seconds. We have an issue. Warte, hast du darauf geklickt? Yeah. Auf die andere Folie da? Ja? Ich will das jetzt sehen. Ja, dann geh hier unten live. Du bist doch schon in da. Ja, jetzt bitte. Sorry. <laughs> okay, sorry. We faced some technical problems again. So first of all, I would like to introduce myself a little bit to give you a short insight about the person who is on the other side. Well, as uh, Stefan already introduced myself, my name is Michael Rumpf. I'm 36 years old. I'm unmarried and have no children. So I'm the responsible industry manager for the division water and wastewater. I'm working with Cronus since almost 11 years, and I'm located in Duisburg, Germany. Well, my presentation is uh, structured in four main items. First of all, I would like to start with a short introduction and a short insight into our general product portfolio. Afterwards, I will shortly give an introduction in the need of the planning tool. And the third point will be more practically in shape of the planning tool itself, what I mentioned already. We will introduce uh, it via a recorded video, what we did before. So the last session will be the question and answer session which we will add in the end. And the whole session will last about 60 minutes. Well, Krone is a supplier of innovative measuring technology for the whole process industry. We were founded in 1921 here in Duisburg. And as you can see on the picture, that is our headquarter, which is uh, here in Duisburg, Germany. So it's a 100% family-owned uh, company, and our turnover in 2016 was almost around uh, 500 million euro. And we did this with uh, more than 3,700 people. And um, the unique thing is that we have more than 350 people in R&D department. So we have uh, 17 product facilities in 12 countries and 44 Krona owned companies and joint ventures and uh, also 55 representatives. 
Well, Trone is offering the whole measuring portfolio, which consists of different measuring principles within the range of flow measurement, level measurement, pressure management, temperature, and analytical product portfolio. Furthermore, we offer also complete solutions in the field of communications, Trone services, and also systems for the marine and for the oil and gas system. All in all, we are operating in 76 industries, of which we can hear See in the or of, uh, of which you can see here in the in the picture that are the focus industries in which we also have a full structured industry division and our focus today will be the water and wastewater industry. Well, coming to the second point, the need of the planning tool. So when dealing with public projects, independent of the size, all involved parties need to work as economic as possible with the public money and uh, to guarantee a market-driven competition and to avoid also distortions of competition, you need regulations and rules. So those regulations are more or less valid for all public construction projects. And besides other things, these regulations and laws say that you need a tender with a tender specification text for the construction of every public project. Uh, okay, so who is creating those public tender texts? We we'll see it on that slide. So basically, a commune or a city is the client to build a wastewater treatment plant or a waterworks or a pipe network or whatever. So they then charge an engineering company which with the planning for this project, and uh, they are creating then the specification text, which are part of the whole tender. So and then different construction companies can apply for this project and need to be conformed to this, to this specification text. Yeah. So the challenges of praxis are that we have too many conflicting tenor texts in circulation and sometimes even too ambitious and oversized texts. So the result of this is that the manufacturer, for example, Krone, cannot make an application fitting low priced offer. So as you can see it here in an example, that one is a, a basic general water application. So that is a real practice specification text for a flow meter. Unfortunately, this is in German language, but anyway, I think you can get the point by uh, reading the, the arrows, the colored arrows. So for example, the red colored arrow show, shows one of the conflicting tenor text passages. On the one hand is a remote version required, and on the other hand, a compact version. Uh, as you can see here, compact version and remote version. And on the other hand, they claim for 50 meters cable. So what do they want, a compact version or a remote version? Yeah. So the blue colored arrows, for example, shows the conflicting situation again. Above is mentioned IP67 here, and here we can see IP68. So again, unclear. And the green arrows show, should demonstrate that the text is maybe too ambitious for a standard water application. So the project was a normal water pipeline, and here we don't need a PTFE liner or even a stainless steel flange. Yeah. So as a result of this, we cannot give an application fitting low priced offer, and therefore we created this online planning tool which, with which you can easily create vendor neutral text for each of your projects. Well, therefore we created this online tool as I mentioned, uh, and you can create this uh, vendor neutral text, and you just need a few clicks and so, uh, and so unspecific text which causes problems were dropped out automatically. Uh, so, okay, now we would like to directly jump into the online planning tool presentation. But as I mentioned before, we, had, uh, we have uh, recorded the demonstration before due to some technical problems. But anyway, we will start it right now. And uh, just for your information, as I mentioned also before, um, you are all unmuted or you are, you know, you are all muted on, on the phone. And the question and answer session will be started right after the live demonstration, which I will start right now. Okay, so now let's have a look in the tool in detail directly. So for this, we need to open our browser. So it's, diff it's independent if we open the Firefox or the Internet Explorer or any other Explorer, doesn't matter. So we type in our homepage, which is uh, planningtool.krona.com. 
and then we directly reach the planning tool itself so we can switch between the languages so for now it's better we're using English and now we see we have an overview about the different industries which is water and which is wastewater so let's start with uh, with wa wastewater for example and now you see we directly stepped into the wastewater process and when we scroll a little bit we see the complete wastewater process in an overview so as you know the wastewater process itself consists of five different sub industries which is public sewage network which which is mechanical pretreatment which is biological treatment which is effluent and which is sludge treatment and you see in the screen in the main screen we have an overview about one complete um, process yeah and uh, as you see, all the different sub-industries are sub-linked, they are nested and sub-linked. When you open it, you will see the sub-industries beyond those main industries. For example, rainwater basin, public sewage network, influent of a treatment plant and pumping stations, which all three belong to the public sewage network. Or for example, biological treatment, which consists of activation, final sedimentation, flocking agent, dosing stations and biological filter system. So just to make an example, we can step directly into a detailed plant component. Let's have a look in activation and upstream dentrification, for example. And now we directly step into a detailed view of this plant component in this case. So and you see, we have um, it's the, plan, the, the plant component itself, uh, the whole process, and we have a small introductional explanation above every plant component which explain the process itself a little bit so in this case for example the description of denitrification and the description of the nitrification uh, so without oxygen and with oxygen and so on and so on which just uh, brings you the process a little bit closer so coming back to the detailed view of the plant component we see there are some blue flashing icons which are the recommended measuring uh, measuring uh, principles and measuring devices which we recommend at this point so and you yeah we can assume that uh, those measuring spots are for 95 percent those ones which are really used in praxis you always have some some exotic parameters to be measured but those ones are 95 percent the measuring spots which are relevant for you in praxis so and you see Krona is, uh, is a measuring technology provider for different measuring principles which are flow, level, pressure, temperature and analytical devices which you can find now here in the process. For example, the, you have, we have an agenda below the plant component which explains you the flashing icons, for example the degree Celsius for temperature, for example the O2 for oxygen, pH value, ORP and so on and so on. And just to make an example, we can click, for example, we assume we want to measure the return or the flow in the return sludge pipeline for this denitrification, for example. So for this, we just need to click the flow symbol, which are the waves. And then we see, okay, we have two recommended measuring devices at this point, yeah, which is the OptiFlux 2100-4100 and which is the OptiMass. So and now it is up to the user to choose the correct measuring device, which we recommend on this at this uh, point. So and just to choose the correct measuring device, you can do it uh, based on different conditions. First one is um, based on your own working experience. So which measuring principle is the best for this measuring spot? Second one is um, you can choose the correct measuring device based on the input of your contractor, for example. And third one, when you don't know what to do, when you don't know which device to choose, you can, uh, yeah, you can differ, or you can, you can um, make use of the notes we have written here, which gives you a short introduction into the measuring device. For example, the OptiFlux 2100-4100 is an electromagnetic measuring principle. The OptiMass, for example, is a Coriolis mass flow meter. Yeah? And also we have some... Uh, some uh, expl explanation uh, notes here which uh, brings you the measuring device a little bit uh, closer and uh, based on those you can choose the correct measuring device yeah. 
So normally we would like to click the detailed information now, but uh, first of all I would like to show you the water section. So we can go to the above mentioned agenda here. You see the agenda or the, the different points we can click. So what we have seen here below, we also can see here in processes. Yeah, we have uh, the same mega menu like we saw already. So which is divided into the five different sections, which is public sewage network, which is mechanical pretreatment, pre pre which is biological treatment, which is effluent and which is sludge treatment. Yeah. And uh, here in the main section, you can differ between water and wastewater. So we are now in wastewater. So now let's have a look in water. Let's click for water, the industry water, and now we can see it pretty much the same. So we have a complete water process, which is which is um, uh, viewed here, which is displayed here. And the water industry consists of three different sub-industries, which is water abstraction, which is water treatment, and which is water distribution. So now we can have a look again, like we did it with wastewater. So the water abstraction consists of different sub-industries, which is groundwater, spring water, riverbank filtrate, surface water, and seawater, for example. And also here we can click for, for example, water treatment. And here we have all the different treatment processes. For example, also all the desalination processes. Yeah. So we see the different plant components for desalination. For example, reverse osmosis or also the thermal uh, desalination processes. Like we can see it here. And now you can see this process is presonated for showing off a little bit. This one is a very, very detailed plant component. And you see this one is a thermal desalination process. And here you have also all the different recommended measuring spots. Yeah. Analog to the wastewater process. We recommend the measuring spots here for flow, level, analytics, pressure and temperature. The procedure is pretty much the same. So you click one of the flashing icon and you will get the recommended measuring device. Also here we can also click the mega menu here in the the uh, agenda is a horizontal agenda, water abstraction, water treatment, water distribution. For example, water distribution, we can click water storage and leakage control. And here you see all the yeah, distribution network, water storage tank, for example, and the main feeding pipe to a city or to a commune. And uh, most, yeah, most uh, detailed application in a distribution network, for example, is to measure the flow. Just click the the flow symbol and now we see we have three recommended measuring devices and also here we have different measuring principles this one is also an EMF this one is an EMF and this one is an ultrasonic clamp on flow meter and also you can differ here the different nodes the different features which are teasered here in the in the short teaser text so for example the Waterflux 3000 is a battery operated water meter yeah. And uh, the OptiFlux 2100, 4100 is the so-called standard version for water and wastewater. And the OptiSonic 6300, for example, is a ultrasonic clamp-on meter, flow meter. So now you can also choose the correct measuring device when clicking detailed information. Yeah. A second way to choose the correct measuring device is to click on products. And here, when you click products, you have an overview about all the different ranges, all the different measuring principles, which are flow, level, analytics, pressure, and temperature. Just to make an example, clicking on flow, and now we have a complete overview about the different measuring principles we offer, we can offer, which are, for example, uh, a vortex, or which are variable area flow meters, Coriolis mass flow meters, or, M or the EMF, the electromagnetic flow meters fully filled, for example. And here you see all the different versions, which are the basic versions, the standard versions, universal version, the high performance ceramic versions, the uh, capacitive ceramic version, and the battery powered version. Yeah. So when you're now clicking, for example, to the standard version, we are now leaving the application side, and we are now directly stepped into the detailed view of the measuring device. Uh, and now you have all the 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 yeah the features available, the tools available which you need for your planning process, uh, for your 
for your sizing process, for your planning process. So uh, starting with an overview, just uh, giving some, some notes, some, some, some overview features about the measuring device, just to get a feeling about the measuring device, about the features, and then the areas of lab applications and some additional features, for example, modular naming, highlights, and technical data. Modular naming is also very interesting, which gives you a short introduction, a short overview about the modular naming of the Krona electromagnetic flow meters. So you see here, we start with the Optiflux 2000 on the left-hand side. Optiflux 2000 is a small number. That means standard version for water and wastewater with a plastic lining, so with PP, PO, or hard rubber lining. Then we have the Optiflux 2000, it's a higher number, it's a yeah, more resistant liner with a Teflon lining. So now you can combine the different liners with the different converters, which are the IFC 100 versions, we call it standard version, or with the IFC 300 versions, which we call universal versions. So a sensor plus a converter results the complete measuring name device, measuring device name. So and you see there are some, some uh, letters behind the name. C is, for example, you see the agenda here. C is for compact, F for field, W for wall, and R for rec version, which specify the correct measuring name. So you see we differ between two versions, which is standard version for the water and wastewater industry and which is universal version. Okay, so coming back, now maybe the questions occur what is the difference between standard version and universal version. And for that, we have this field here. You see the differences between standard version and universal version. Universal version is for increased requirements, such as custody transfer, more than one signal output, for example, communication to transmit a uh, flow, uh, flow signal or a connectivity signal at the same time. So increased accuracy, additional housing versions, for example, nominal diameters bigger than 1,200, solid content more than 10%, and extended diagnostic functions. Then you go to the universal version. And you see we have a shortcut here, a short link. Normally we have uh, avoided to link the measuring devices among themselves, but in this case, because standard version and universal version are very, very close together, we have done this. So you can click to the universal version. And now we step directly to the universal version. And you see the converter is a different one. So the, the, the shape of the tool is pretty much the same, the, 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 the look and feel. But the measuring device name is now different. So we call it now Optiflux 2300, 4300. So the 300 version here is the universal version, which is a little bit uh, more extended in features and so on and so on. So yes, here you can click back to the standard version. That is the only point in this tool where you can click between two different measuring devices. Modular naming is pretty much the same. Then we can see highlights. And you see the highlights of this measuring device are, for example, the diagnostic functions, as you can see here. And diagnostic functions are additional measurings which we have implemented into the measuring device because, as you know, Nowadays, in nowadays plants, it is very, very important to increase the efficiency to um, yeah, have more and more measuring data available and not only the flow, but also, for example, some additional measuring, um, yeah, measuring functions. For example, a connectivity measurement. And that is what we have integrated in our measuring devices as a standard, not as an option, but as a standard. And one of these diagnostic functions are, for example, connectivity measurement, detection of electrode deposits, corrosion, uh, the temperature display, detection of air bubbles, gas, gas bubbles, accuracy check, checking of the flow profile, or partially filled detection. Those additional measurings are we calling upgrade diagnostic functions. Yeah? And they are always coming as a standard, not as an option. And for example, the connectivity measurement is very important in water and wastewater industry. Uh, or in different processes, in water and wastewater processes, because, for example, um, you want to monitor your water, your raw water, or, for example, your wastewater. So your medium has a special, a certain homogeneous connectivity, 
But just in case, when there is an incorrect disposal, for example, of, uh, of an indirect um, discharger, you will have a change in your homogeneous connect connectivity, and that can be monitored by the integrated connectivity measurement. Normally, you have it uh, as an analytical inductive connectivity measurement in an inlet of a treatment plant or at, uh, at an uh, inlet of a waterworks, for example, after the raw water abstraction. But uh, of course, in the pumping stations, you have anyway a flow measurement measured by an EMF. So in this case, you just can rid get, get rid of the inlet measuring connectivity measurement and can realize it with the integrated connectivity measurement of the EMF. Yeah. You just need to respect the, the output of the EMF. For example, you can output the connectivity measurement by an analog output or by directly by a digital communication such as ProfiNet or ProfiBus, for example, or Modbus or any, any else uh, digital communication. So that is one highlight of the, of the universal version. Of course, the standard version has also an integrated connectivity measurement. Yeah. But also you can have uh, an accuracy check and, and checking of the flow profile, which is also very interesting, just to check uh, the correct installation of the measuring device. So th that is very important just yeah, to make sure that you have a correct installation. So another very, very nice important highlight for this universal version is the virtual reference, which is a new innovative grounding method. Yeah, normally, coming by the measuring principle of an EMF, you need to, uh, to ground the medium before and after the EMF, because you just want to measure the induced signal which, is, which was induced in your measuring device. Now, normally you do this by the use of grounding rings or of a grounding electrode or whatever, but the, when you use the grounding rings, the grounding rings or the price of grounding rings are depending of the diameter. So they are linked to the diameter. The higher the diameter of the pipeline, the more expensive are the grounding rings. And the virtual reference is a reference method which is linked or which is realized by the electronics. And um, this virtual reference is not linked to the diameter of the pipeline. So there's just one price adder, which is very low, of course. And um, so you have one price for small diameters and the same price for higher diameters. So this one is very, very nice to use for big diameters, yeah, just to save money. Okay, now you can also click some technical data and then you have an overview about the technical data. For example, the diameter, this universal version is available from diameter 2.5 to diameter 3000. You have the different lining options, you have the different um, yeah, measuring accuracies with the different converters or different diameters. You have the communications, you have the protection class, the different converters and certifications and so on and so on. Okay, coming back to the next point of the agenda which is installation conditions. Installation conditions are just some pictures which are self-explaining, but uh, anyway, coming to a detail to the inlet and outlet sections. So this normal EMF, this normal universal version EMF, needs some straight inlet tubes and some straight outlet tubes, which are normally five diameters inlet and two diameters outlet. You see on this picture in some certain uh, conditions, which are 45 degrees bends before and 45 degrees bends after, then we can go to three diameters inlet and just one diameter outlet. Yeah, so when you just have some small disturbances, yeah, which are 45 degrees fittings or smaller. So when you have uh, 90 degrees bends before and after, please respect the given five diameters and two diameters outlet. So many engineers are respecting the inlet and outlet runs beginning of the outer point of the flanges. That is absolutely okay. But you see in the picture, you just need to respect the inlet and outlet runs from the inner side of the diameter. So from the mid of the diameter. Because here we have installed the electrodes and here we grab the signal. And here we need to have a homogeneous magnetic, uh, homogeneous uh, flow profile. Yeah, so please respect the inlet and outlet runs just begin in the mid of the diameter of the meter. 
So now we assume we have a diameter 100, for example, which have uh, installation lengths of, let's say, 200 millimeters. Then you have 100 millimeters from the mid of the device, from the center point of the device, to each counter flange. So and when you have to respect one diameter outlet, so when we have a diameter 100, we have to respect 100 millimeters outlet. Uh, so and keep in mind, we have an installation length of 200 millimeters. That means from the center point to the outer flange point, we have 100 exact those 100 millimeters. So in this case, in this example, we have realized the outlet length directly in the meter, within the meter. So that means we do not have to respect any further outlet lengths in this example. Uh, so just keep this in mind. Okay, all the other pictures can be can be seen here. That is clear, of course. Uh, avoid vibrations, avoid magnetic fields, external big mag magnetic fields, bends, okay. Avoid the installation on the highest point and so on and so on. Open discharge. For a valve, please uh, respect the installation of a valve after upstream of a, of a meter, not, not uh, uh, downstream of a meter, not upstream of a meter. And a pump, please uh, install the meter downstream of a pump and not upstream yeah, and the grounding we discussed this already okay coming to the next point of the agenda which is download and download is very interesting so uh, okay of course we have the manuals and we have the data sheets which uh, brings you some further technical technical um, highlights of the meter which is always up to date, of course. We have the data sheet of the sensor, which is OptiFlux 2000, and we have also the data sheet of the sensor OptiFlux 4000, and we have the data sheet of the converter, which is IFC 300 in this case. But coming to a little view to the software. So this software is, um, are, are the softwares for, software programs for the sizing of an EMF. The first one is uh, for the determination of a nominal size. And uh, we can just uh, um, click downloads here, and those are just uh, some, yeah, some uh, compressed files. We don't, no, don't do not need to open it here because I've already downloaded it. So just click click the button here. Oh, excuse me for the error message. My PC is I got just got the new system. So, um, and we see here, this is just an Excel sheet for the determination of um, the nominal size. So we see here the international field. And for us, it's just interesting the, the orange colored icon here, please enter a value. And those different fields are just different in the unit. For example, cubic mass per hour and liter per seconds. So we just need, can enter just one example. Let's say 80 cubic meters per hour results a diameter between 100 and 150. Uh, and this diameter determination is based on a flow rate between one and three meter per seconds. Uh, so and now let's let's just make an example. So we assume we have an existing pipeline of a diameter 150, and the contractor wants us to integrate an EMF flow flow measurement device. Most engineers, in the first reaction, reduce the pipeline to a diameter 100. They do that because of two reasons. First reason is okay in EMF. In diameter 100 is much more cheaper, it's not so expensive, like an EMF in diameter 150. The second reason is uh, the reduced pipeline in diameter 100 is more accurate. The EMF is more accurate at, compared to in diameter 150. Okay, keep this in mind. We close this uh, program for the diameter size and go to the next one, which is called MIDUL, Software for Accuracy Curves. Uh, that is just a small Visual Basic programming. You have to install it. So I've already done this. Let's go to program. Let's have a look for for Midul. Okay, open Midul. So it's a little bit old-fashioned, but don't keep in keep in mind this. So and then so we have to respect the right-hand agenda. So we have to just to type in the instrument type. So we are now in OptiFlux 2300, which we can find in the list here. So coming back to our example, we have we said we have an existing pipeline diameter 150 and we have reduced the pipeline to diameter 100. So we have to type in diameter 100. 
volume and time, we can uh, set any volume and time unit, and our maximum flow rate was 80 cubic meters per hour. Then just press calculation, and we got a wonderful overview about the accuracy curve, which is one main point for the sizing of an EMF. On the left hand, you see a wonderful graphical overview, and on the right hand side, you can see it in a table. And you see, when having 80 cubic meters per hour, we have a velocity of 2.8 meters per second, and we have a measuring error of 0.23%, which is quite excellent. Okay, coming back to our example, we press new calculation, and we assume that we would not reduce the pipeline, but we will stay with our existing pipeline, which was diameter 150. You see here, the maximum flow rate keeps the same. Now press calculation, and we see with 80 kilometers per hour, of course, the velocity have decreased, has decreased to 1.2 meter per second, and the measuring error now has increased a little bit, but just a little bit. It's just 0.28%. So you see that is, yeah, let's say always, or that is kind of neg negligible. Huh? So um, the assumption that uh, the reduced pipeline will be more accurate is just a theoretical one. So you see, in many applications it is, applications it is uh, okay to reduce the pipeline, but in some applications it is better to compare the different accuracies, and then you see, okay, is it, is it uh, worthful to uh, reduce the pipeline or not? In this case, I would say, okay, we can keep the diameter 150, and we do not need to reduce the pipeline, because you have to keep in mind, when you reduce the pipeline, you have to uh, um, respect the, the prices for the, for the fittings, for the... Yeah, decreasing and uh, increasing fittings uh, for the reduction fittings. You have to calculate it in a hydraulical, uh, um, yeah, hydraulical calculation, and so on and so on. So in this case, I would like to to stay with the diameter. So in this tool, you also can click diagram and you can uh, export the diagram, for example, to Word. And then you can just use it for your planning papers, and so on and so on. So, okay, that's it for this program, just end, and um, yeah, you just need those two programs just to uh, make the sizing for an EMF, for the determination of uh, nominal size and the accuracy curves. Um, yeah, we don't need to go in detail to the pressure loss calculation because uh, we haven't reduced the pipeline now. So in this field of downloads, you will also find the C a D drawings in 2D or in 3D, and you can download this according to the different diameters. So measuring principle, we can just uh, skip this. We have the measuring principle, of course. And then uh, finally, we have the tenor document, which is a specification text. And when you click the tenor documents, you will see we have a vendor neutral text here in this field. And we have a specification sheet or specification uh, yeah, table in the left hand side. So everything what you click on the left hand will automatically change in the text. For example, we can make an example. We click for example the uh, uh, measuring tube material hard rubber and you see changed into, the, into red and um, you can see the diameter which is available from diameter 25 to diameter 3000. Everything is available, every diameter. Clicking, for example, diameter 400, and we have it now in the text diameter 400. We can also click the nominal pressure based on ASMO or EN or whatever. We can choose the different measuring electrodes, Hessler C, stainless steel, whatever, the French material, the operation, oper operating flow rate, which is uh, 100, for example, cubic meters per hour, and the medium, for example, is uh, raw water. We can click the explosion protection. We can click the custody transfer, which is according to MI001 or OEML R49. And we have the grounding options. And here you see we have the virtual reference, what I have explained before, virtual reference. We have the power supply and we have the different communication options, which is basic IO with one current output, two current outputs, three current outputs, or the Profinet or Profibus communication. And of course, we have the design, which is compact or which is separate, for example. And when clicking separate, wall mount housing or field mount housing, we have also some points to choose. 
IP68 protection class or IP65. So when having everything chosen, when, when, when we set everything, we have the vendor neutral tender, the specification text here. What you can, what you can download with the export button, export Excel or export Word, for example. And when you click it, you will have the vendor neutral ready specification text in Word. Yeah. Okay, so that is pretty much an overview of the functions of the tool. I think uh, you see that it's very, very easy to use. So um, just one thing is missing, the Krone proof, for example. We can have a look in Krone Proofed. Krone Proofed is just to give you a small insight in our calibration facilities, with what you can find here, for example. We have a calibration video here and we have the calibration facilities here, electronic chambers, climate chambers for the electronics here, and so on and so on. Also, we have some applications and references, which are named here for water and for wastewater, what you can download just here, and we have some application references named here worldwide. And we have some additional points, which are the Krone Academy, in which you can learn a little bit more in detail about the function of our measuring devices. And you can register for free in Krone Academy under the, under the Krone Academy link here, what is named here. So by the way, for this tool, you also need a small register and uh, you just click here. So I'm of course registered before and um, after a certain point, you just need to open the link planningtool.krone.com and you will automatically link to the register file. And once you have register, you just can use the complete Tool. You need to confirm the email what you get and then you can use the complete tool. Yes, okay, so um, that's it for the main points of the planning tool. So that was just a short introduction, but I think you can, you can make use of it. So yeah, whenever you have any questions, you can see the contact file here. You will see my contact date, uh, detailed data here and you can uh, contact me in any case and at every time, every, every time when you have some further questions. Okay, thank you very much for your attention and I uh, would like to wish you uh Yes, so thank you very much, Michael, uh, for, for this uh, demonstration um, of, of our planning tool. Well, what we have to tell you again, uh, we are really sorry, but um, we were faced to some technical issues. That is why we had to to um, to record before um, the online demonstration. So coming now to the question and answer. So we have a lot of questions, and we hope to get them answered all. And uh, well, we maybe we can um, distinguish between two two types of questions. We have a couple of questions um, um, belonging directly to the platform itself, but we have also questions uh, which. Um, um, yeah, uh, um, related to our business and products. So maybe we are going, because the topic was planning tool, we are going not to first into the question um, in regard to the planning tool. So there is the first question appearing, and um, the, the, the participants are asking, Michael, how is the registration process going on? Do you receive a confirmation link once having filled in all data, please? Well, uh, yes, as I mentioned in the last slide of uh, the online presentation, so you just need to open the planning tool in the web browser under planningtool.krone.com and then you enter the tool up to a certain level so you can work with this tool up to a certain level and uh, you will then automatically guide it to the re registration sheet where you can fill in your data. So and after doing that you will have uh, the full access for 24 hours without doing further actions. Yeah. The system in parallel will send you an email with a confirmation link which you need to click and here with confirm your registration and after that you can uh, you can just save your login data and uh, once you open your browser and you open the link for the planning tool you are automatically registered with your name right so great um, second question um, which is now uh, coming um, here onto our screen as um, 
Yeah, in regard to the tender text, Michael, which you uh, showed us, and um, uh, yeah, which was last, uh, well, was really the most interesting part from my point of view of, of this planning tool to, to facilitate your, your daily work, it's, um, is, there's always mentioned Krona inside those tender texts. Um, uh, yeah, so is it, is it really necessary to have, um, to have uh, the Krona devices mentioned in the tender text? Well, indeed, that is a good question. So, uh, as I mentioned before, we have uh, implemented uh, vendor-neutral tenor text, but of course, also we entered the or we, we integrated the, the measuring device name. But uh, for now, the device name is mentioned in the tenor text. But however, you can delete it manually after exporting the text via Word or via Excel. But in future, will be a function which enables you to select or to deselect this option. So this new option will be available very, very soon in the next days or next weeks, let's, let's, let's say. Good, Michael. Then another question um, coming up here from someone, from a user. It's, um, yeah, we have seen now in, in the presentation, um, yeah, it, well, why well, someone is not really, clear, it's not really clear about the, the main advantages. Can you just please summarize again in a short sentences, yeah, what is the main, the, the main benefit of this platform? Well, of course, um, yeah, you, you saw a lot of benefits already in the presentation, but uh, okay, I can summarize. So uh, this planning tool just gives you an overview about the complete spectrum of measuring technology for the water and for the wastewater industry, as you saw. You can select between water and wastewater. And this tool was created just for the complete, or the main intention was the compilation of tender text, of specification text within the area of flow level analytics, pressure, and temperature measuring devices, which we offer as Corona Measuring Technology. So we implement a lot of helpful features and things which the engineers need for their planning process. For example, the device-specific downloads, the data sheets and the manuals, the operating instructions, the short-form descriptions of different plant components, also the 2D and 3D drawings uh, in, for example, different formats, the calculation software, the sizing software for dimensioning accuracy curves, and for sure the correct tenor document in Word and Excel format. So for this tool, you don't need any installation because it's an online tool. Okay, but uh, yeah, by the way, for the CID drawings, which I mentioned, uh, you haven't seen those in the online demonstration right now. So this button was uh, still missing. But uh, as I mentioned before, we are permanently working on this tool, so the option of CID drawings will be available from now on in the horizontal menu we saw. So after your registration, you will automatically see it. So when you register right now, you will automatically have the CID drawings in the horizontal navigation. So and by clicking this point, CID, uh, you will find a configurator where you can select the settings like diameter and like uh, pressure rating and like housing compact or field version. And once you filled in all the options, the drawings will be available in 2D or in 3D, 3D in different formats. Yeah. Yes. I, I'm, I'm not remembering. Did you also come back um, well the, to the fact that the person works in a chemical chem company? You, uh, because actually you said um, that uh, in, because it was, it was a treatment plant. What, what do you mean exactly? Uh, yeah, he, he asked, actually, I'm working for a chemical company and I'm responsible for the wastewater treatment. Is it, is it, is it also um, then efficient to, well, to use this platform? Well, of course. I mean, uh, you, you, you saw the two different industries, water and wastewater, and uh, of course, also in a chemical plant, we have uh, a wastewater treatment plant with a, which is working with uh, with the plant components or the plant technologies which we mentioned in this tool. So you just need to click wastewater, and then you just click the detailed plant component, the process which is relevant for you, and then you can just select uh, your process and you can see the recommended measuring devices. And at this point, when we have, uh, for example, very aggressive or abrasive uh, mediums, we also have uh, uh, respected this yeah, at this point. So we recommend, for example, a flow meter with a ceramic liner when you have a, a precipitation agent, which is uh, dosing a chemicals or whatever, then we recommend a, a ceramic liner or a, a PTFE liner, for example, a Teflon liner, which is then dedicated for the chemical industry. Yes, you can use it. Okay, then quite interesting uh, question. I would also like to come back to this point. 
It's um, as I, I know actually you reworked the planning tool, right? And um, because there was the, the, the question appearing, how new is actually the planning tool? Uh, how how uh, how frequently customers refer to this tool? As I know, you made just a relaunch, right? So maybe you can tell us a little bit about this fact. Yeah, as I mentioned already, so we have uh, engineers who are working permanently on the planning tool. So, and that is the, 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 the big advantage compared to a planning CD, for example, that you are always up to date and that you are always refreshed with all the information. So once we have a new fact or once we have a new device which is coming up to our portfolio, we will uh, rework the planning tool and we will implement this to our processes and to the planning tool. As you saw, for example, with the CAD drawings. So yesterday when we recorded the, the live demonstration, uh, the CAD button was uh, still missing, but now nowadays, so today, when you just register to the planning tool, you will see it automatically in the horizontal navigation. So this tool is always up to date and always uh, filled with fresh information. Well, this is a kind of um, not, not let's say not funny questions. They're not funny questions, but uh, I'm not sure whether you can respond to that. But there was someone who said us uh, well. Firstly, that's a, a huge compliment because the person says. That, um, that this tool is amazing and helpful in time saving, but um, is this, uh, uh, can this tool also be used for the oil and gas industry? No, there's only, let's say, for, for the water and wastewater industry, right? Well, when you find some, 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 yeah, some equivalent processes, of course you can use it, but uh, for the oil and gas industry, in my, in my opinion, so you have different processes, so it's, it's, it's kind of different, but when you are from a different industry, you can, you, can, you can have a look under the button products and here we recommended or here we implemented all the products uh, which we have available for the water and wastewater industry. But of course, those products are also valid for different industries. For example, the OptiSonic uh, 3400 and ultrasonic uh, flow meter can be used also in other industries or, or an OptiFlux 2000 can also be used in, in, in other industries. So. Um, or the clamp-on ultrasonic flow meters can be used, for example, in oil and gas industry, whatever. So when you find a device which is uh, yeah, performing also in other industries, you can also use it, of course. Yeah. Okay, maybe this next question goes in the same way, but um, in regard to the, the, the measuring devices, um, do, you, do you or do we as Kronos sell only the measuring device or do we also design water treatment processes also? I mean, this... Uh, well, yeah, indeed, we are actually a pure measuring device and measuring solutions manufacturer and also deliverer then. But nevertheless, we provide such planning tools to support our customers within the selection of the right device. So we do not offer such extended consulting services of complete plants, but we are a manufacturer of measuring devices and measuring solutions. Uh -huh. So we are not a consulting engineering mm -hmm. office uh, Maybe yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. There's, there are there are already two persons who ask um, in regard to local representatives um, uh, because they they were interested in getting some some contacts in the local country. And um, what I can tell you is that we have on our homepage. If you go to www.chrono.com, you will find in the right above corner um, a, a pull down menu where you can actually select your country. Um, and uh, there you can choose the country, of course, and you'll find directly the respective person or subsidiary of Krona where you can refer to uh, in any case of questions. Um, yeah, then we have also another um, question, which is not really referring to the planning tool, but rather to an application. Um, what is with uh, sedimented water uh, with mud or with sludge? Um, a person is asking because there's an application with this kind of medium. Um, what flow meter can be used? Well, uh, yeah, you can have so the sludge, the sludge measuring, for example, in waste that is a typical process, uh, yeah, or typical situation in a wastewater process. So you can have a look in the wastewater industry. So you have to just to select, for example, the activation and then the denitrification, and then you can see, for example, a sludge pipeline, yeah, and then you just click the flow symbol of the sludge pipeline. And uh, yeah, you will guide it to the correct measuring device. But you can also click the button products, and then you can directly have a look to the, for example, OptiFlux 2300. The OptiFlux 2300. 
So this device allows you a solid content of up to 45% suspended solids. So that is a really dedicated measuring device to measure the sludge in wastewater, for example. Yeah. Okay, then we have uh, two participants of our webinar today um, uh, who are asking the same question the same way. It's referring to our solution, which we are offering for partially filled pipelines. And um, yeah, we have exactly some something like that, an electromagnetic flow meter. And um, the question is, um, uh, yeah, where, where can, as I told you, we have the solution, but where can this, um, this flow meter be found also on the planning tool? Yeah, well, indeed, you, you can find such a flow meter in, in our tool. So normally the partially filled flow meters, the partially filled pipelines, were used in the wastewater industry, such in uh, wastewater inlet for wastewater treatment plant, for example, in mixed pipelines, uh, in mixed sewers, or for example, in stormwater pipelines, in big stormwater pipelines, where you mix or where you have rainwater, so the pipeline can be filled or half filled or empty, whatever. So, and by clicking, for example, the industry wastewater in the tool, you will find the flow meter for partially filled pipelines. Now you can directly click into products and then you will find under the EMF, under the electromagnetic flow meters, you will find the EMF for partially filled pipelines, which is called tidal flux. So and when then clicking the tidal flux, you will automatically guide it to all the required features which you need, such as for, such as for example uh, installation conditions or even the CAD drawings or the tenor document or the siting tools or whatever, the features of the device. No. Okay, when, just maybe let me tell you another thing, uh, guys. Uh, as Michael told you, well, in regard to the partially filled pipelines, we have something like that in our portfolio. And we, of course, we have also a learning program, which is called Corner Academy Online. I don't know if you heard about that. Uh, you can simply type it into Google. You will be um, guided directly to the page. This is an online learning tool where you can register yourself for free, and you will get a lot of e-learning courses available in, in regard to all measuring principles, which you can find in process instrumentation. And what is quite nice for you is actually that the e-learning courses are not referring to any specific products of Kronos, so this is like uh, completely uh, commercially free, but the, 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 the courses are referring ra rather to the measuring technique itself. So um, if you're coming back, for example, for the partially filled pipelines, you find also a course uh, in regard to electromagnetic flow meters, and there exactly this kind of, um, let's say, EMF is also treated and described. So please feel free to come back to this platform completely free and, um, and register yourself on Krona um, uh, Academy Online. And uh, Okay, so we have, let's say, two, two questions. Um, maybe we have well, at least one question answered before we uh, run out of time. Um, there was a question in regard to, uh, where was it? I'm sorry, in, in regard to, to the tender text. Um, is it possible to select non-standard pressure flow meter, um, for example, DN400 PN25? Uh, well, yes, you can do it, but for the for the pressure rates, we 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 implemented just the standard pressure rates. So for 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 this uh, special application, you need to export the text via Word or via Excel, and then you have to type in your 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 yeah your ambitious pressure rate. Manually by you, by your own, you just need to delete the standard pressure rate, and you can type in the pressure rate, for example, PN25. No, possible. Okay. So in regard to the to the Medul, well, yeah, okay, there was uh, the question you got to the Medul software you were you were presenting. Uh, of course, we can make this available. It's also free of charge. But if you want to register, maybe to conclude now the webinar because we have we are running out of time, one and a half minutes left. So. Um, to tell you um, that, uh, again, um, the planning tool is quite easy to access. Uh, well, firstly, via our, our Chrono, uh, uh, Chrono website, or you type in planningtool.chrono.com. You can register easily, as Michael described before. And there, of course, you will find all um, dedicated download links um, uh, in regard to the software Michael presented. Um, yes, yeah, so 
thank you very much again for participating to our really interesting webinar. And um, yeah, maybe to tell you at the end that um, the on-demand version will be made available as soon as possible. We'll try to get all answered, uh, unanswered questions answered as soon as possible. And um, we also, from Chronosite, uh, will we'll send you by next week a short, uh, short thank you email with all important links inside and uh, some other tutorials. Also, the link to the Chrono Academy Online where you can train yourself. And then, um, yeah, of course, when you go to the, to the on-demand version by uh, as soon as possible, you, you can place also your questions. They will be directed uh, to us, um, and we, we can get, uh, give you some answers afterwards. Um, and you can access actually the business, uh, well, the, the on-demand version via the business review website. Uh, please continue to ask questions, interact with the widgets, and uh, yeah, the on-demand version remains, of course, interactive. So thank you very much, guys, for having participated to our webinar today. We hope that you uh, you, you learned a lot of uh, things, and we are we are hoping to welcome you soon uh, on our webpage. Thank also, you very much. Also, thank you from my side. So it was a pleasure for me to uh, give you this short presentation. It was uh, really a pleasure. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Goodbye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye.